see the Max How Holloway fight? How good did he look the other night? Jesus Christ. Oh. It was insane. He broke his own record. He has number one, number two, and number three for the most strikes landed. Most strikes landed and most strikes thrown. Oh, it was ridiculous. He, his volume is off the charts. It's hard to imagine and didn't slow down one iota. In the fifth and final round, he still... Oh, it was amazing. No, no problems with his cardio at all. I mean, that pace will cripple a person. It's yeah. just... He's superhuman. It was like a superhuman performance. Like I, I really want to talk to him about what the fuck he does for cardio. Yeah, he it, should he should give seminars because yeah. I I just don't understand. I don't understand how he can keep that volume up. And you could see like and Calvin Cater, the dude he fought, is one of the toughest men that's ever lived because the beating that he took in that fight, the fact that he never stopped swinging, yeah. never gave up, never stopped trying to win. Took some shots. I mean, was wobbled on multiple yeah. occasions and and covered up and was still swinging. Was still trying to win. God, what a fight! That was great. What I mean, what uh, what a performance! It's like one of the greatest performances. I, it might be the greatest single performance I've ever seen. He was sharp, man. I just you know, wow. Yeah, and that's coming off what two losses too, right? Yeah, but I don't think the last loss uh, was yeah. really a loss. The last loss was a, you could a, make a, a real argument. And, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at worst, a draw. Yeah, a real good fight though. Still, it was and, still and yeah. That just shows you how good Volkanovski is. Yeah, is that, you know that he could beat him in the first fight and then you know have such a close fight in the second fight. But when you watch Holloway in this fight, he was different. First of all, he was never in the same spot. Like a lot of guys, they make this mistake. They like they uh, like they think I want to hit this guy, so I'm gonna go at him and hit Straight him. Straight in. Holloway's thinking I want him to think I'm gonna hit him, and then I'm gonna be over here, and now I'm gonna hit you, yeah. and you're gonna swing, but I'm not gonna be there. I'm over here now. His yeah. footwork and movement and angles were off the chart, yeah. and he never let Calvin set. He like a, a guys like to set up and think ready now, and you don't get a chance with Holloway. You never, it's, it's always punches coming at you. There's always a kick. There's a side kick to the leg. There's a leg kick coming. There's a jab in your face. It's all mixed up. And then when you think you got to figure it out, boom, spinning back kick. Yeah, like, it was, fuck. It was a clinic. It was it was absolute clinic. And you've always been a huge MMA fan, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think you're, you were, you had to be one of the first people to really start bringing those elements into the WWE. Yeah, yeah I started to, yeah, I, I used, uh, I mean, Hell's uh, Gate is what a triangle. Uh, no, no, no. It's a uh, a, a Gogo Plata. Yeah, yeah. I just oh. changed the name. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I used, yeah. I've I've been a fan from way back in the day. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, the first one I went to was in Miami. Might have been uh, so. Ice Ice Liddell was on the way up. I think Randy oh was the champ. So this is like 2003. Yeah, or early, something. yeah, yeah. There you go, oh, there you Gogo go. Plata. Wow, that's crazy. Changed the name to Hell's Gate. Mm. So you would grab them by the back of the head and run your shin underneath their neck, without trying to actually do yeah. that. Yeah. Did you, do you have you trained much jujitsu, like actual jujitsu? I used to. We used to have a. Uh, funny enough, we used to have a, a ref that uh, he, he, he. I'd, I'd get in and roll with him, ah. and uh, man, I would. I would get there early and just pick his brain, and by the time it shows, I'd be I'd just be exhausted. But you know, um, <laughs> but I was but then you know, I, and I did it because I you know I was, I was such a fan of it. I want to, I like to understand. Mm -hmm. I like to understand why things are done and why they're done, and you know, and everything, boxing and you know, wrestling and everything else. So that fight started, that you're talking about, it, it, I feel like that's 2003, the Miami one. Because I think that was the first time that I ever did play-by-play, -play, and boy, was I fucking terrible at it. Um, but Phil Baroni did color, so it was me and Phil Baroni did the commentary. Because yeah. I think, I think Mike Goldberg at the time had like a hockey game to call or something like that, and he couldn't get out of it, and so they asked me to do it. But I didn't know what I was doing. Wow, play-by-play uh -huh. -play is like what John Anik does is hard. What I the my role is pretty easy. Like if you understand fighting, there's a lot going on. Yeah. You just have to know who's fighting and. You know, I'm such a fan. I'm watching everything, so yeah, I'm paying that's, attention. I, I remember the fight because so, Tank, Tank Abbott, found me, and man, he wasn't even sitting anywhere close to me. But he he spent the he spent the fight with me. And oh, that's just, awesome! Yeah, he talked to me the whole. What a night. character that guy was! Oh my gosh! Yeah, I ran into him years later in L.A. to at a bar. It was the same thing, man. He he's he, lost a crazy amount of weight now. Yeah, he he was he was a lot slimmer 
when I had seen him in L.A. Then. I think he had uh, some issues, some health issues. Yeah. I, I yeah. wouldn't doubt that. Yeah. yeah, for all the, the booze and Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a big fight. I went to uh, I, I quit going to Lesnar's fight. So every time I'd go, he'd get he'd lose. But uh, <laughs> sure enough, you felt like I you went, were a jinx. Yeah, I was a jinx. Right? So I went to the I went to the, his fight with Mir, and uh, you know he got caught in that that uh, knee bar, mm-hmm. or, or, and then uh, then he obviously came back and he won the next one. Then I went to the Velasquez fight. Oh, you know when he came back from that fibrotechitis thing and. He was just... That was not the Velasquez fight. That was Alistair Overeem. Al, Alistair right, I was Overeem at the, was uh, the diverticulitis fight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I, so yeah. So I was at the I was at the Velasquez fight. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So he had diverticulitis already when he fought Velasquez, but he doesn't know like when he had it or how yeah, long he had it for. Yeah. The the scary one was him coming back from having. I mean, I think he had like twelve inches of his, his intestines, intestines yeah. removed. And then he fought Alistair over him, like not that long later, yeah. like um, less than a year later. And Alistair kicked, kicked him in the, the body, sh- yeah, right in the liver. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Alistair at the time was he was hopped up on all the Mexican supplements. That was when they had <laughs> they had a silly drug testing program. I mean, it was basically like an intelligence test. Yeah, they would just test you the day of, and if you knew what you were doing, you could pass. And Alistair passed, and you looked at him, and you want to see someone not pass a sniff test? It's <laughs> Alistair Overeem when he was fighting. Pride. Go, go to the, the weigh-in with Alistair Overeem when he's fighting Brock Lesnar. It is the most preposterous physique in the history of the sport. I mean, if you think, like, Yoel Romero has a ridiculous physique, Alistair Overeem, when they used to call him Uberim, like, and he was 260, <laughs> shredded, full six-pack, and just a destroyer. Like no 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 that one down right in the the bottom lower right hand corner right right where it says related images right below related images no right below related images Scro- right there you see the word related images right next to your cursor see where it says related yeah right there bam look at that son <laughs> what is that about I mean uh, what what are you fucking talking about are you out of your mind that is a preposterous physique that's a uh... Yeah. So that's Alistair when he fought um, Brock. And just, he, I mean, he has small children living in his biceps. Look at the size of his fucking biceps. They're ridiculous. Crazy. And he just smashed Brock. It was just, Brock really shouldn't have been fighting at After that, that time. Yeah, no, no he I mean, came back way too Major quick. surgery. Yeah. And, you know, and his trainers, uh, they, they were concerned. You know, like yeah. you get kicked in the stomach after you've had literally a gigantic chunk of your intestines removed for uh, a disease that who knows how long that was bothering him yeah you know he really didn't know he got sick he almost died man you know diverticulitis is crazy oh it's yeah yeah, it's nasty yeah yeah it's just like the something gets caught in your intestine and it gets infected and twisted jams up and clogs up and yeah and they don't totally understand it either no Mm -mm. i once Mm. saw a clip of brock leaving the octagon uh and you yeah, guys you guys are staring at each other that's it right there yeah you guys have like a very <clears throat> serious moment what was that about do you think he was trying to goad you into a fight i was there to pick a fight you were there to pick a, an mma fight with him not a yeah. fuck no <laughs> what are you smoking never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind are you fucking crazy so you were there to pick a uh, wwe yeah, fight I, yeah yeah um uh, yeah that's well, my you wife and looks Ariel very Helwani. confused she, you didn't let her in? Huh? You didn't let her in on it? No, she she knows what's going on, but she's still like... Did she play it off? Yeah, she's <laughs> she's a worker too. She knows, she, she gets it. <laughs>